Now then YouTube, I'm the Tough Man, and welcome back to some more Batania. It is part three of my latest update to the Batania. It's 1.7.2 or 1.7.10 Minecraft. It works for both. And uh, guys, I've got a couple more items to show you. It's a continuation of my previous videos. If you haven't seen them, there will be links in the description to all of those parts as well. From the very beginning, when I first covered Batania and its basics, to right now, which is the latest things that have been added in. So we're starting today from release 1.1, build 64, and a couple more things have been added in. So back in release 1.1 build 64, it was added in uh, a mana bottle. Now, you can go up to a mana pool like this, chuck a bottle in, and you can get a mana bottle back out. Now, let's go into uh, normal mode here. If you're feeling particularly daring, you can go ahead and drink this. And it can do some random stuff to you. Like, what the heck? I think that's meant to be a pixie. <laughs> so that one spawned a pixie and it can do other random stuff like that as well, I don't know what that's for uh, but the item, apparently from Vazki, the item is pretty much like a joke anyway, so god knows where that went, something just went somewhere ah, half heart now serves me right for sticking his head on a pike now there are two new rods also added in in beta, not sorry beta, re release 1.1 build 64, rod of the skies and rod of the hells, now Let's go to Mystical Instruments, Rod of the Skies. The Rod of the Skies is a magical instrument with the ability to propel one into the air at fast velocity for the cost of some mana. To do so, one would simply hold it like a bow and watch as their momentum increases. The rod takes a small amount of time to recharge, but during that time, it'll block any fall damage keeping the user safe. You can have a Rune of Air, a Living Wood Twig and a Feather, and that will get you the Rod of the Skies. Now. Be careful with this guys, because if you hit it once, and it's already recharged, you can see on the bottom left there, it's got like this little bar that recharges after itself. Um, if it's already recharged, and it's not actually recharging, it will give you some sort of fall damage, like that, as you can see. But if you hold this down, as you can see, it's recharging right now, gives me no fall damage, as long as that bar is actually getting charged back up there. So, just keep that in mind guys, before you go chucking yourself around, doing that once, there, you can see it's actually recharging there. That's not recharging, and I do get fall damage. So be very, very careful when using this. Um, I'm sure that some people will come afoul to maybe a death or two, so just watch yourself. And that is the Rod of the Skies. Look at all these pigs, man! Well, let's deal with them. The Rod of the Hells, guys. This is very, very nice indeed. The Rod of the Hells contains the essence of a burning flame. Used, using it on the ground will create a circle of fire that burns anything inside it for a decent cost of mana. The ring has a decent radius and takes a small amount of time to fully propagate. It's to note that after a time, after that time, it burns anything living in it, include the caster included, which would why I'm studying water. You need a rune of fire, living wood twig, and a blaze powder. I think it's time. And oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, there's burnt. There is uh, cooked pork on the menu tonight, guys. Wow. And it's burning me as well because I've st stood out of my uh, my protective barrier of water. There we go. And there you go. So that is uh, pretty pretty decent and very very brutal. I've got to say. Alright guys, um, in release 1.1 build 64, another item which I think is amazing and you guys will actually love this particular item is the Vine Balls and the Slingshot. Um, I think those are in Mystical Instruments. There they are, Vine Balls. Ladders can't stand up on their own, they require something on their back, whereas vines don't. Normally though, vines aren't strong enough for someone to climb them when they are freestanding. By, com uh, by combining a few vines, it's possible to create a ball that can be thrown to create a climbable ladder of strong vines where it hits. This is pretty good. I, I love this, guys. It's also possible by combining some materials such as living wood and string to create a slingshot that lets these vine balls be shot by, uh, while completely ignoring the force of gravity. So vine balls can be crafted with nine vines, and that will get you a vine ball. And the living wood slingshot is four living wood, I can count, and a rune of air. So, using a vine ball, you can just chuck it, and that will go ahead and create climbable vines. That is great. Not only that, but this, of course, 
is subject to gravity. The slingshot, however, if you hold this and do this, it isn't, which is fantastic. And you can just do that, and then you can climb up them if I've not got the sash on. And there you go. Man, that is just fantastic. I love these this vine ball and slingshot. It's a brilliant idea. We're moving forward. A couple of releases now. Re ver release version 1.1, build 66. Added in Prismarine. That's right, guys. The stuff that's actually from 1.8 version of Minecraft. Let's go and have a look at this stuff. You can see I've had a look at it right here. Um, it is under miscellaneous right at the bottom there. And Prismarine. Now, the Prismarine is an interesting component and, build and building block. Some scholars even go as far as to say it comes from the future. See what you did there, Vaz. To create it, one requires an alchemy catalyst. Simply by tossing some nether quartz into a mana pool with the catalyst attached to it, we'll get some of this material. So it's an alchemy recipe, guys. Uh, there's various building blocks that can be created using prismarine shards, to which all but the sea lantern can be turned into their stair and slab variants. So you can see here, nether quartz in the mana pool, but you've got to have it as an alchemy thing, and it'll pop out a prismarine shard. Which is brilliant. And like I said, the prismarine shards around a cobblestone will get the prismarine. It will also do prismarine bricks around stone bricks. You can get dark prismarine around nether brick, which I think is fantastic. And the sea lantern, which is around a glowstone. Don't forget, you can get the uh, the stairs and the slabs and stuff like that, like Vasquez says. And uh, guys, it looks absolutely fantastic, does this stuff. I like it. Prismarine. It's this stuff I like. The dark prismarine. I'm going to need to go into create for this. Yeah. I like the look of that, guys. I certainly like the look of that. It's very nice. It'd do very nice as a floor, that would actually. Dark prismarine. So, also in the same day, uh, the same update, Vasky put in the ability to actually bury your petals. Now, it doesn't work on sandstone, which is a shame. But it does work on, uh, of course, dirt and grass. So if you click the, uh, a petal in your hand, you can bury them. Now, it will give you this awesome little effect here. This, like, shining effect, which I think is pretty nice, guys. You can also dig them back up by just simply right click, uh, left clicking. Um, I was in creative, so it broke it. But all the same, let me go ahead and show you when I'm not in creative so you can see. There you go, it just pops back up, and you can go and grab it. So you can have a nice garden that's all sparkly. Oh, that, that looks nice. I like that. And of course, it depends what colour you actually plant to what kind of uh, particle effects there is. Um, and there you go. Variable petals. Okay, guys, we're into uh, the final stretch of our Batania Spotlight now into release 1.1, build 67. There were two new mana lenses that were added, influence and weight. Now, it just so happens that on here, I have an influence gravity lens. That means I've combined an influence with a gravity, with a slime ball. And uh, I'm going to show you guys exactly what this thing can do. So I've got some uh, things in there. And basically, the influence will influence any blocks that are in front of it. Uh, let me show you, actually. Oh. Hmm. It's doing it before I've actually asked it to. Uh, it's pretty far down the list. Down here. Influence lens. Allows the mana burst to have an influence over any nearby dropped items, experience orbs, and even falling blocks. Having them move in the exact same vector of the motion as the burst itself. And you can make it with prismarine shards, with a mana lens, and a rune of air. And that will get you the influence lens. Now, coupled with... If we have a look at this, guys, you can see that uh, the gravity lens is, is doing its business. And bending that arc of that thing. Now, those blocks aren't actually moving. You can see that they're right there. But if we directly influence this with the redstone uh, contraption here, and just click that, you can see it's actually doing it. And it's following it, it's following it, and when it runs out of steam... It'll drop the items, and then there you go. How ledge is that? That's great. I think that's great. That is the uh, influence mana lens. The next mana lens is something called weight. Now, this thing is pretty cool also. Uh, the weight lens carries a strong burden on the mana burst, making any block hit by it, if there doesn't happen to be a block below it, fall, similar to how sand and gravel do. You can craft this with prismarine shards, with a mana lens, and a rune of water on the bottom there, and that will get you the weight lens. Now, 
I've got a block here. Now, as you can see, I've got my wand of the forest. So you can see it, the, the burst is going to hit that particular block. There is no blocks below it. Let's go and get rid of all them. So, when I actually let mana go through here, it will hit that block and actually make it drop to the ground. Much like sand and gravel do. Man, that's fantastic. There you go. That is the weight lens. And to finish it off, guys, release 1.1 build 72. We have the uh, a couple of config options that's actually been added in by Vasky for map makers. Now, this is going to be very, very interesting. Uh, hopefully, when it comes around to me doing the magicality map, and I really want to try to do that as well as I possibly can. It might take a while for it to happen, uh, but who knows. Anyways, uh, that's for a different thing entirely. I did the mana pool cap before voiding. In other words, you can get a certain amount of mana in the mana pool before it will then start voiding any mana that goes into that particular mana pool for map makers. And also a one-use mana tablet for map makers also. Now, just as I was about to actually put this video out, guys, uh, Vasky says to me, hey, hold on on that a second because I've got something to push through. Release 1.1 build 74 has added shedding. All sorts of mobs will now randomly drop components of their body. Example, you know, you can get feathers from chickens, bones from skeletons, gas tears from ghasts, and so on and so forth. Um, this feature duplicates the mod chicken shed and adds variants to other mobs, which basically, uh, if you don't know what Chicken Shed is, it's a, 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 a mod that Vasky made previously that basically allows chickens just to drop sh uh, feathers randomly. Um, there's also a few other things that have been fixed. Fixed glimmering flowers working below pylons for the enchanter. Fixed the life aggregator ca uh, crashing servers. Um, fixed the snowflake pendant not placing blocks in the correct location under some circumstances. It's increased the resistance, uh, fall resistance of the Sejana's sash. Reverted a recent change where particles would stay in the world for less time. And uh, the Globetrotter's Sash will now give you a higher jump height and fall resistance also. Now, I am using build uh, 74 within this mod spotlight. So, whatever you've seen has been the new stuff as well. So, um, ooh. I wonder if anything's been dropped then. Mind you, nothing's actually spawning. If I had a chicken or something like that, I would be able to show you guys the, uh, the effects of that. So... That's it. I am all caught up with Britannia right now, guys. Release 1.1 build 74. Um, if there is anything that's been added in in the future, you can bet your life on it that I will be doing a spotlight on it at some stage. And uh, I'm sure that Vasky will poke me and say, hey, I've got some new stuff to be added in. But I think, I think, and this is touch wood, that Vasky has gone on a little bit of a break from Britannia right now. I know he's done a lot of work in the last week or so on that, so... And, you know, before that as well. It's just constantly adding new stuff, guys. As always, go and check the uh, the rest of the parts out in the description if, if you so happen to be watching this part for a particular reason and you haven't watched the other ones. It's uh, much, much obliged if you could do that because uh, not only would you learn more about the mod, but also... It helps me out as well. It helps me out. And uh, I hope you guys are enjoying it. If you are, and if it's been informative at all, um, and it's helped you in some way, please go ahead and click that like button. It really, really does help my channel as a whole, uh, which is fantastic. And uh, I've got to have a big out, uh, a big out, a big up to uh, to Bevo as well, who keeps mentioning my mod spotlights in his video when it comes around to Britannia. Uh, so thank you very much, Bevo. Um, he's in my suggested channels as well. I've actually got him... As my, uh, if you go onto my channel, on the right hand side it says Bevo LJ. Uh, I'll also try and leave, if I remember, I'll try to leave a link in the description over towards his channel as well. Um, so, that's it. I'm all caught up with Britannia, guys. Until next time, I'll be the tough man as always. Stay safe.